the Dark Bible. Atrocities. Babylon is fallen. And, behold, here cometh the chariot of men, with a couple of horsemen. And he answered and said, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, and all the graven images of her gods he hath broken onto the ground. Isaiah 21 9. Comment. Many soldiers have used Bible verses to justify horrific destruction against their enemy. Such beliefs can comfort the minds of men to do virtually any kind of atrocity against men, women, and children of the enemy. The crusaders of the 12th century slaughtered or tortured anyone who stood in their way. The Bible's words gave them their justification. Even today, our government, military and religious leaders judge wars as moral based on biblical reasoning. Fighting men feel not only comforted, but glorious in their actions against the destruction of fellow human beings. In the Gulf War, for example, an F-16 fighter-slash-bomber had Isaiah 21-9 written on its bombs. David slaughters them. And he brought out the people that were in it, and cut them with saws, and with harrows of iron, and with axes, I Chronicles 23, comment. Chapter 17 to 19, 17, 18, 19, tells us that David killed 22,000 Syrians and that Abishai killed 18,000 Edomites. No one expresses shame at such slaughters. Here in 23, we have David, counted as a great leader of the Israelites, slaughtering captives after the cessation of hostilities. From what high moral ground should we admire this action? Decapitate them. And Israel joined himself unto Balper, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, Take all the heads of the people and hang them up before the Lord against the sun, that the fierce anger of the Lord may be turned away from Israel. Point. Numbers 25 colon 34. Comment. Those who worshipped other gods must die, and even more horribly, their heads displayed publicly. Either God never said anything so cruel, or we truly live in a cursed universe, ruled by a maniac supreme being. Millions of people, today, switch their religions. If God had any interest in this ongoing process, there appears no evidence of this. Gideon slaughters. And Gideon said, Therefore, when the Lord hath delivered Zebah and Zamana into mine hand, then I will tear your flesh with the thorns of the wilderness and with briars. Judges 8 7. Now Zabah and Zamana were Karkar, and their hosts with them, about fifteen thousand men, all that were left of all the hosts of the children of the east, for there fell an hundred and twenty thousand men that drew sword. Judges 8.10. Comment. The Gideon Society places Bibles into motels and hotels across America. One would assume Gideon lived, as a person of exemplary character and great worth to have a worldwide society named after him. Below describes some of Gideon's accomplishments. Gideon slaughtered thousands in battle by plotting with the Lord to use treachery. Gideon murdered thousands more for worshipping false gods. Gideon tortured and killed still more for daring to taunt him. Gideon plundered the bodies of his victims to fashion a jewel priestly vestment. Gideon fathered an offspring who killed 69 of his stepbrothers. Read the story of Gideon in Judges, chapters through 6 to 9, 6, 7, 8, 9. The tale of Gideon describes just one of the many horror stories in the Bible, a book that glorifies behavior abysmal to modern society. The clergy and leaders have hoodwinked millions of people about the stories in the Bible. Don't let others decide for yourself. God buries them alive. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up and their houses, and all the men that appertained unto Korah, and all their goods. They, and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit, and the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them, for they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. Numbers 16 colon 32 35. Comment. Moses relays a sadistic threat that asks us to believe that God punishes members of families, including innocent infants. And again we have the satanic fire coming from God burning his creations. God kills the firstborns. 
And it came to pass, that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon, and all the firstborn of cattle. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he, and all his servants, and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not a house where there was not one dead. Exodus 12 colon 2930. Comment. If we believe every word in the Bible as coming from God, then it stands to reason that the violent actions from the God described in Exodus cannot give us a moral comparison to live our lives in a peaceful world. If one wishes to believe that God possess love for his creations, then the killing of innocent children cannot possibly come from God, and therefore, these verses from the Bible must have come elsewhere. But note that, if one takes the Bible's words as absolute truth, then not only did God smote the firstborn children, but all firstborn regardless of age. This means all firstborn teenagers, firstborn men and women, firstborn octogenarians, and even all firstborn cows and bulls. Regardless of how much love, charity, or goodness they may have imparted to the world, if they had the unfortunate luck to have first passed through their mother's vagina in the land of Egypt, according to the Bible, God killed them, 